there's nothing to be afraid about because we like to say that in Mo Mondays, you meet the nicest people. My relationship with him was always really perfect at first. And then these cracks would start appearing and things stopped making sense. And then I got on antidepressants hoping to make things make sense. Not for myself, but for the relationship and for him who I thought I was torturing so much because I'm such a nutcase and he deserved better. And um, in this relationship, I was told I was too insecure, I was too critical, I was a nag, I was too emotional, I was too resistant. And I just absorb all this criticism as fact. It never felt right. About a year and a bit ago, uh, as I was going through this, this process of, of showing back up to work and putting my best foot forward and having lots of challenges, like lots of, I, I mean, it's not even worthwhile getting into it, but <laughs> just so many challenges every single day that I was tearing my hair out, you know, I started to get sick. I started to get chest pains. I stopped being able to sleep. I stopped being able to worry about work. And eventually, by the time I had made my decision to leave, I was so ill that I got a bacterial infection that normally antibiotics would have solved after a few days, but I needed an IV for a month to cure it. You know, I was so <laughs> sick. My, my body was rejecting the life that I was choosing to take every single day. And etched in this tree's bark are things like balanced prosperity, justice, responsibility, collaboration. And the sun's rays make the tree radiate with green brilliance. The tree's strong, smooth roots plunge into the earth, bringing life-giving forces to the tree. Forces like kindness, respect, humility, moderation, and vision. And the tree's fruit shines, the branches sag under its weight. Fruits like peace and love, respect and satisfaction, contentedness, connectedness, and sustainable growth. And that was the day when I realized that life is so precious. Um, it's not to be taken for granted. And I was probably, I think, 22, that, 22 when it happened, 21, 22 years old when it happened. And that's when I decided to live um, in honor of Anastasia. Um, that's when I decided to do things that I never thought I would do. I was still in school. And, um, you know, I graduated two years later. I got a degree in psychology. And um, after that, I decided to compete in pageantry. There was violence in my home. There was aggression in my home. I mean, I worked in litigation. I know what justifiable homicide is. But that was kind of disgusting, right? So I got up out of bed, and I went out onto the balcony, and I was listening to the cicadas. They had uh, hatched. I don't know if you know, but they don't hatch all the time. Anyway, it was this wonderful droning noise, and it was kind of meditative. And I was sitting there, and everything finally calmed me, and I was quiet. And in that quiet, I really realized I was dead inside. I was so alone. You see, I went from being a war-torn, homeless, high school dropout, running a successful corporation by age 20. But how, how did this happen? I mean, at one point, I'm on Rideau Street panhandling for change, where my biggest goal was to run up $6 to go buy myself a bottle of Triple X Sherry so I could drink my pain away. To running a corporation before the age of 20 with 15 locations across Canada, how does this happen? Did the world change? Did people change? Oh, what do we think? Oh. So do you think we should keep doing it? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank God, because otherwise I should have moved it. Uh, 